Hi everyone. Uh, it's great uh, having you with us this evening. It's our fun evening. So uh, lowering the cortisol, having some fun in the kitchen as we try to keep up with uh, Chef Pete and this amazing, amazing recipe. I sort of think that we'll never eat chicken breast in another way in the future. So Pete, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. I know it's a hectic uh, few weeks that you've had, and it's great to, to have you back. Thanks, Dev. Thanks, folks. Yes, it's a, it's a mental week, actually. Um, I, 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 I originally planned, I thought I had a function for 40 people this evening, um, and it turns out it was last night. Uh, but fortunately, I found out that mistake in time, so I was able to do both. So um, I would have been in serious trouble had, uh, had my function not not have I not noticed my calendar that I've made a mistake. But anyway, we're here now and we're going to cook a recipe I've not actually done before. Um, I kind of sat down and I, I was actually thinking about what did I fancy eating at the time? And it was all about what I actually fancied had in mind and I hadn't had cheese for a long time. Um, and I, I've kind of started putting this recipe together and now I realize that there's five different kinds of cheese in it. So <laughs> this is hence the uh, baked cheesy chicken. Um, but I think uh, it should be it should be quite tasty. So I think we'll get straight on to it. Uh, first off, we're going to get so the, the basically we've got some kind of semi roasted veg that go on the bottom. And the reason we cook them first is that once you put the chicken on top, they get, it gets it. The, there's a little bit of liquid that that um, that is released from from the chicken, and the, the veg can be a little bit more. So we want to give it a couple of minutes in the oven just to get a bit of color on it cook for a little bit while while we do the rest of it so so i'm just going to start with my red pepper and cut that down a little and then take out the seeds take out the seeds and then we're just going to cut this into kind of into eights you know um, depending on the size of your pepper um you know you can cut it larger or even smaller i've got it into quite a lot of pieces here because this is quite a hefty pepper so there, and then I'm cutting these tomatoes again. These tomatoes are quite small, but you want quite thick slices of tomato, not thin, thin slices. So they've got a little bit of. And now these, I'm only going to get really two slices because these are quite small. So I'm going to use a couple of extra tomatoes. I just cut the base off so they stand better. Feed tomatoes and a fridge. Sorry. Let's uh, just try oh, and meet somebody yes. here. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that, Steph. So, one of the things that we'll find is buying ripe tomatoes these days is an absolute nightmare. You can never seem to find where they're ripe. So, the secret is never to put your tomatoes in the fridge. Because what happens is if you leave them out, so you must always buy your tomatoes a couple of days before you need them and just leave them in a bowl on your kitchen counter or on the table in the, in the dining room. And you will find that in a couple of days, they've actually carried on ripening and they really are nice and rich and red and beautiful as tomatoes should be. You know, you kind of often get those really hard and they're more pink than red. And those are the ones we kind of want to avoid because those aren't very, very ripe. So, okay, here we go. I've got my baking dish and I'm literally just going to put my tomatoes in here. And my peppers. I say so you want a big enough dish so this is a single layer because if they all start stacking up on top of each other, it's just going to steam and you're not going to get nice color on them. And then I've got some olives. I know I said pitted olives in the recipe. I'm just very, very lazy and couldn't be bothered to. I'd rather just spit the pips out when I get to them. So that's just me being a bit slack. And now some basil. So this, I'm just tearing the basil up. I don't mind if there's a little bit of stalks in there as well. Because with, the softer, with these softer herbs, like, um, like parsley, for example, basil, sage, coriander, you'll find that the stalks are not very woody. And there's actually more flavor in the stalks than there are in the actual leaves themselves. So there's no problem to leave them in there. And they give a bit of crunch and a bit of texture to the dish, which is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so now we've got some uh, uh, a little bit of salt and pepper on here. Got some salt and pepper, and then so this this is the Mediterranean part of the dish. 
And I said the cheesy chicken Mediterranean, this is the Mediterranean element, the basil, peppers, and olives. Seems we're coming into spring now. I hope this is the kind of dish that we want uh, on a nice spring evening. Lashings of our favorite extra virgin olive oil. There we go. Now I'm going to pop this into a really hot oven. Sam, thank you. I'm going to pop this into a nice hot oven um, and let it do its thing for about 10 minutes or so. I've got my oven on about I got my oven on about 200, 220. So there we go. So let's get that in. And I'll just get my chicken breasts out so that we can prepare for the next step. Now I've got skinless chicken breasts. Um, because if you buy breasts in the um in the actual in the supermarket, for some strange reason, you can never get them with the skins on. I, I really don't understand it. I think. They're mistakenly thinking they're trying to be super healthy. Um, and the skin is, is where all the action is. You know, the skin on the chicken, particularly on the breasts for me, is, is vital because it crisps up quite nicely. But when you cook it in the pan or you cook it on the fire, that skin gives a level of protection so the breast doesn't dry out. And of course, I mean, who doesn't love a bit of crispy chicken skin? So, but unfortunately, we're, we're doing without skin on our tomatoes, on our chickens today, but it's not train smash. It's not a train smash at all. So I've got my chicken now. What I must do before I cut these open is actually get to my mixture. So how are we doing, guys? Everybody there or thereabouts? I realize that I need to slow down a little bit because I can't go at the chef's pace because otherwise people get left behind. Um, I generally like to see the speed that Helena is going at. But she's always also not a good indication because she's a very she's a damn fine cook and is a bit of a whiz in the kitchen. I know Steph always has us believe that he's the one doing the cooking, but not so much really. I'm, yeah, well, um, I'm out of my comfort zone tonight, uh, Pete, because I haven't prepared okay. anything. So I'm with all the guys starting from scratch today. <laughs> okay, ooh, 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 okay, pressure. No, pressure, sure, pressure. Sure, sure, sure. So at least, Pete, when when she didn't prepare, at least we follow the recipe now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean, the, I made your I made your, colleague, I made your colleague cheese dish last week. Frank and I we went on a on a retreat, writing on the on the new fire program, developing it, and and I, I took the recipe book along and I made the collie dish. Okay. And it's the first time that we actually made a, it according to the recipe. And it was tasting fabulous. Previously, it was okay. But wow. Oh, careful, oh, Steph. Oh, yeah, the, the night is coming. <laughs> no, I know, I know you're, you're not on camera, but you're certainly within swatting distance. So I'd be careful about those comments. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Okay, so, well, in fact, I kind of, we had that conversation about the cauliflower cheese. And I, and I was kind of figuring out how we could factor that into this evening. So I thought, okay, what we will do is we'll make the cheese sauce element. So that we will do in a moment's time. So um, that's going to top the chicken. So we'll get into that, that lovely che cheese sauce um, that's a, an absolute winner for the roast cauliflower. Okay, so I'm going to start with my, um, my stuffing, as it were. So I've got my ricotta cheese here. This is nice and soft. Ricotta can be quite a bland cheese, but that's also fine. You know, that's why we add a little bit of some, some a little bit of stuff to, to kind of sex it up a little bit. And to that, we're going to add a little bit of Parmesan, some Parmesan, some salt and pepper, and we're going to chop some basil through this as well. The basil is a nice fresh cheese that goes throughout the dish. You'll find that this, this is quite soft. I'm going to put an egg into this mixture just to help firm it up a little bit. But you'll probably find that it will get a bit squidgy and oozy, but it's fine because we're baking it. So whatever oozes out of the chicken breast is going to just ooze into the tomatoes anyway. So it's not a train smash by any stretch of the imagination. There we go. Um, okay, some basil. 
You could also chop some, some yeah. olives through this if you wanted to. It's a nice bit of olive paste or some chopped olives would, would, would work nicely. Some chilies would be good or sun-dried tomatoes. You really could go wild with the stuffing. It's kind of, as the only limit is kind of your pantry and your imagination. But as I say, ricotta is the perfect vehicle because it's a nice creamy filling and it keeps the chicken nice and moist. But is it? It's almost like a blank canvas, um, and it till and it till and it shows you. Okay, it's a great vehicle for flavors. Okay, so roughly chopped basil, and that goes into our into our mix. Again, okay, nice roughly chopped. It doesn't have to be finely chopped. We want to get the flavor in there. I'm just going to have a taste of this. Oh, very nice. I can do with some more salt and pepper, though. I'm just going to put a dash of olive oil. You must put the egg in, into this mix, right? Eh? I'm going to put the egg into this as well. I just want to season it first before. Otherwise, you can, you can taste it with the My egg, egg is in already. Sorry? My egg is in already. But that's okay. That's not that's a problem. Okay. okay, I didn't mess up. I just, okay. I'm not wild about that raw egg sort of flavor to it. So I like to season it first. <laughs> Put the egg in afterwards. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. <laughs> but the basil went down the wrong way there. Okay. So I'm just going to get my egg in now last. Do you have some cough syrup there? No, no I just slipped a bit of basil in the wrong way. So I'm just going to grab no, that, that, that red, red cough syrup is good. <laughs> No, I'm off the cough syrup at the moment. <laughs> okay. So the egg is going to make this a little softer, but it will firm up when we need it. Okay. So that should do the trick. So there you have that nice kind of <clears throat> loose, cream cheesy kind of thick batter consistency. Um, and it should taste mm, nice and sharp, nice and cheesy, nice and rich. Lovely hint of basil coming through there. I'm just going to check on my vegetables for a couple of seconds. The vegetables are just starting to soften up a little bit, which is exactly what we wanted. <coughs> okay, so how are we doing with our filling, guys? So let's not rush too far ahead. Plenty of time to do this dish. As I say, yeah, some chopped olives with this, through this. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit of chili in because I've just realized that I've, I've got some nice jalapenos. And so I'm just going to chop this up and put this into my into my stuffing just because I can. So 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 you say in this in this cheese mix we put some olives again. You could put some. You could put some olive, chopped olives if you wanted. You could put sun-dried tomatoes. You could sun put tomatoes. Kind of a, a mixture of herbs if you wanted yeah. to. You could put some basil, some parsley, some sage would be nice. So I'm just saying that the mixture can really be whatever uh, sort of vehicle you want it to be. I'm just adding this nice, like this beautiful ripe red jalapenos, which I just saw sitting on the kitchen counter, and I figured I'm going to throw them in as well. So those of you at home watching the recipe, wondering what I'm doing. I'm just deviating from the pan a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me, because I happen to see some chilies on my counter behind me. And I thought, oh, that might be a nice addition, a little bit of zing to the chicken. You can also put some lemon rind into this. As I say, the, the, the flavor combinations of this stuff are quite limitless. So, Pete, if this is my, my, my sun dried tomato, do I yeah. chop it? Do I first put it in hot, in hot water? Do I just chop it and put it in like You can just chop it straight from there, put it in, it'll soften as it cooks. Okay, good. Okay, so that's our mixture. We're going to set that to one side. And now we're going to start with our chicken. So basically what we're doing is <clears throat> what we call butterflying. So we're almost like cutting a pouch and flipping it open like that. So cut it from the thick side. Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Cut it from the thick side and almost cut it right the way through so you can flap it open. So it's almost almost like heart shaped for want of a better description. So you cut from the thick side, halfway through, oops, I cut that one too much. 
Didn't see that. And then we go here, same again. Just cut it in and then flap it open. <clears throat> We're not going to flatten this out and roll it up like a roulade. We're just going to have a bit of... <coughs> oh, excuse me. A piece of basil went down the wrong way. And it hasn't come up yet. Okay. So, now we have our chicken breast. And now we get some of our filling. And we just pop that in the middle. Pop that in. Okay. I can hear someone talking in the background, someone asking a question. So there we have spread out our, our mixture and into our chicken breast. <clears throat> okay, let's put that to one side. And I'm just going to fold this over. You can, um, I, I mentioned in the, in, the, in the recipe too, you can actually fold this, um, you can pin this closed with a toothpick if you wanted to. I unfortunately couldn't find the toothpicks. So I'm just going to let it sit like this. <laughs> As I mentioned, if it, if it starts to ooze out, it doesn't really matter because it's going to ooze on top of the, 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 the base. So it's not going to do a dish any harm. If it caramelizes on the bottom of the dish, the more the taste it. I'm going to get my veg out of the oven. So this is just starting to soften nicely in this beautiful kind of Mediterranean walk with that wilted basil, the tomatoes and the peppers. And everything is not completely cooked, but it's starting to soften and I'm starting to get a little bit of color. And I'm just going to put my chicken breasts in. There we go. Well, this one's a bit messy. That one's definitely going to ooze. And I'm going to do a little bit of seasoning on the top of the chicken. There we go. And then a little bit more olive oil. And then I'm going to pop these back in the oven. There we go. All told, this, the chicken should probably take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. And what we'll do next is we're going to make the cheese sauce. We're just going to finish this dish off. Okay, so this goes back in the oven, nice and hot. Okay. Let's just clean up here. Okay, so how are we doing? Okay. That's it. Okie dokie. So by now you should be filling your chickens. As I said, um, for, for it to look all neat and sexy, you want to take a toothpick and just sort of poke it through to okay. keep the chicken closed. But it's not essential because it's going to go in the baking dish. Yeah. And if some of that cheese oozes up, by the time it's covered with cheese, <laughs> and with cheese sauce and, and gratinated with the, with the mozzarella, you're really not going to notice. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too stressed if you, like me, don't have any... Um, uh, any toothpicks. I've just realized now, as one does when carries on talking, is the chopped garlic that I was going to put into the um, filling, I completely forgot. Okay, so sorry about that, folks. I added the chili, which wasn't in the recipe, and I forgot to add the crushed garlic, which was. So we'll just have to go without garlic. I'm going to put this into the, I'm going to chop this now and just put this into the cheese sauce because at least we've got a little bit of garlic in there somewhere. I don't mind where it is. Mine's going to be yeah, in the sauce. You must, in it. Speak, you must show us how to do the garlic. Okay, has no one ever seen that? Okay, let me see if I can find the... Okay, let's do that quickly. I mean, just uh, two seconds, I'm going to get the grater. Your garlic, great. Yeah, the garlic trick is great. Okay, so we're going to put the yes. garlic in the, in, the, in the cheese sauce now and not in the, in the mix. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so, so the thing about fresh garlic is... Everybody for years has always used this, this processed garlic. And the processed garlic you buy in the little blickies is the spawn of Satan. Um, basically what it is, is it's rehydrated garlic flakes. So basically they get the dry garlic flakes and they rehydrate it. And that's what you get in that garlic tub. So try not to buy the processed garlic. And also you'll find that because it's not fresh garlic, you end up using a lot more to get that lovely kind of... Um, uh, that lovely, uh, 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 that unique sort of garlic flavor. 
Um, and the problem with the other stuff is that you never quite get that nice, fresh garlic flavor. Um, and, and it just is always a, it's a bit of bitterness to it. So what I've always suggested, people is, the reason people don't use fresh garlic a lot is because they hate peeling it. So what we've got here is a garlic peel, a garlic clove with the peel on. And we have here, this is a bit of an old rusted grater, family heirloom. We take this side of the, of the, um, of the grater, one the finest one that we, you would normally do uh, Parmesan with. Not the, not the rusty, the, the, the sharp one that you do the nutmeg, but this one with a, with a fine cheese. And you literally just grate with the skin on. And then what you find is the skin is too coarse to go through to go through the to go through the, the actual the actual what's the name itself, and what you end up with is some lovely, really finely chopped garlic. Um, and the nice thing about when it's grated like this, it really is quite fine, and it really melts into anything that you use it with. So it is quite a it's a good way of doing it. And particularly if you've got loads and loads of garlic to do, it can be a, a, a nightmare to now crush it all and 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 and, and chop it. Just literally take the whole thing. Great, it's skin on, and it's it's a job done. It's, it's it's a better job. It's finer than you'll chop it, and it takes a third of the time. And much better than this garlic presses. That's yeah. just a mess. Yeah. I've never I've, I've never been a fan of the garlic presses. First of all, you have to peel the garlic, which is part of the most of the problem anyway. Is the peeling of the garlic. But the, the other problem with with those garlic presses is that over time, unless you start getting a toothpick in and start pushing it out uh, or cleaning it with a brush, I find that. That you get little dried bits of garlic and it never really yeah. cleans properly, and you have this old garlicky kind of vibe yeah. to it, which yeah. is not very nice. Okay, so next step is. Um, so shall sauce. we quickly check in? I just want to check in with the, with some of the people, Pete. Yes, please do. Okay, so um, let's just see. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Is everyone up to speed? How how are we looking so far? Carol, how are you doing? So you are muted, Carol. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, um, I'm doing well. Good. Um, on top of things, yeah. You're on top of things. Okay, fantastic. Right. Uh, fantastic. Going, yeah. <laughs> Great. Greg, how's it going in your kitchen? Chaos. Are you having some fun? Yeah, it's going hectic. I've got my assistant with me, so it's going well, better. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can't, uh -huh. do this. you can't do this without an assistant, that's for sure, hey? I oh, know, no, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going well, thanks. Thanks, Pete. Excellent. Great. Roy, how's it going in your kitchen? You're muted, Roy. You're muted, Roy. Just press. Mm. Sorry, we had load shedding. The lights have just oh. come on. So I was watching the movie. I'm gonna, we're going to make it tomorrow night, but it looks great so far. Oh, cool. Great. Fantastic. Elmery, how's it going in your kitchen? Daniel, yours. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, I was just struggling with load shedding and behind, so trying to catch up. So it's a bit hectic. No, oh, no, no, no. Let's let's relax and then catch up. Louise. Yeah, definitely. Are, are you in charge of your kitchen, or is uh, are the slaves doing it for you? What the fuck is to say? We mustn't buy the processed garlic. Louise, you are muted. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> Yeah, well, I also had no shedding up till now, uh, just about 10 minutes ago. So I, I'm just, I've prepared the stuff, but um, I haven't put, uh, I've just not put my veggies in the, the okay. oven now. Great. Cool. Flip, are you, in, are you in control there, Flip? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping going. What, what I'm doing, I made half a recipe for the air fryer, just to test out the air fryer. Oh, cool! Excellent. So, so I, nice I do, the, I, I do the, I do the basic recipe and then a half and see whether because this can be done quickly in certain days. We, yeah. Yeah, air fryer is a brilliant idea. But right. that's on the side. I, I do the main recipe also. Yeah. Ah, okay, cool. 
Excellent. So Flip, you are now also part of the air fryer community. Okay. I've yet to get one, I must admit. I must Everyone admit. Yes, I, I also don't have one. You know, Flip, uh, Pete, perhaps we are, we're on a different planet, eh? Yeah. I see Helene has started the cheese sauce already. She's following the recipe oh. this time. <laughs> Pete, Pete, for a change, somebody's ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, well let's let's get the cheese sauce on the go. So we've uh, we've got our pot on. Now I've got my I just get my cream in, nice warm pot, cream in. Oh, well, let me just get the pot. Let me just get the pot. Where's the pot? There's the pot. Okay, good. Let me add okay, the pot. We've, got, we've got the pot. Yeah, pot, yeah. so cream's in. Cream's in. Let's just get that. Let's heat that up a bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of white wine, dry white wine into this. What also sometimes works quite nicely is, um, is a little bit of chicken stock, actually. A little bit of chicken stock, if you've got some stored in the freezer, a little bit of chicken stock works quite nicely with this. So I'm also going to put my garlic in. Don't worry, folks, if you're just tuning in. That was the garlic that I forgot to put into my stuffing of my chicken, of my chicken breast. So I'm just going to throw it into the sauce, rather. So at least we'll have a garlic in, this, in there somewhere, just not where it was supposed to be. But when the dish comes together, it'll, it'll be fine. So that, that's, that's all cool. Okay, so... So now this is just a sauce that you kind of need to keep a, a, an eye on because you don't want it to boil over, um, but you want it to be bubbling quite nicely so that so that it reduces down and, and, and thickens. Now the beauty of this sauce, I always my, my one lament when, when we started doing this fire diabetes was the fact that I love cheese sauce, particularly cauliflower cheese, is one of my favorites. And the idea of not of not being able to make a bechamel sauce with the, with a thickening with the roux was 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 one of the things I lamented. But then we stumbled upon an idea which has worked into a, an absolute treat. And this is what we're doing today. We actually use the cream cheese as the thickening agent. So the cream cheese will help to, to actually thicken the cream itself. So there it takes the place of the flour. And then, of course, adds a lovely bit of cheese in this to it. You know, normally when you make a bechamel with, with, a, with a roux base, you have to cook it out for at least 20 minutes to get rid of that, that flour texture and that flour, uh, that flour taste. Whereas this doesn't need to do that. It cooks relatively quickly because there's no flour in it. So we're not worried about that. So I've got my, my cream is comfortable. I'm just going to put um, a nice glug of white wine, dry white wine. Not essential. Not essential, but it also just gives a nice sharpness to the dish. So that when you're reducing cream and cheese, there's an element of acidity in that sauce that makes it a little bit lighter. It's also more fragrant, but it also gives a nice lightness to the sauce so that it's not overly cheesy. I mean, we are, we are talking 50 shades of cheese here tonight. Okay, so it's coming up to the boil a little bit. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this. Just whisking that so that it doesn't boil over. Oh, it's going to boil over. Oops, let's turn that off. Turning the dish, the, turning the heat the wrong way. Okay, oops. So you can see it's boiling, clearly. <laughs> Just whisking that, it helps to release the air, which helps to cool down a bit. We just want this to thicken up a little bit. We just want to cook this down. And also by boiling this way, we also cook off all the alcohol from the wine. So that the actual alcohol itself is gone. It actually evaporates out of the dish, but the flavor remains. Okay. Oh, actually, that garlic is actually quite nice. All right, so whisking away. Let's turn it down. It's one cup curious. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my cream cheese. So that just goes straight in. And then we whisk that into the, and that just gonna, that's going to melt. Oops. So let's get that last bit in there. Mm. Chef's prerogative to lick your fingers. Okay. okay. Oh. 
And here we have it, and this will start to thicken quite nicely. We're going to reduce this down a little bit, season with some salt and pepper. And that's it. Hey, presto, a really, really nice, super cheesy um, cream a cheese sauce. So you'll find that you'll never go back to the old way with the boring flour in it, because this just incorporates that cheesy flavor. It's rich, it's creamy, and it really has a lovely zing to it. You know, again, with this sort of cheese sauce, you could also, I'm just going to melt some cheddar into this, but you could also then, you could turn this into a blue cheese sauce. You could whisk, you could whisk in some gorgonzola, or you could whisk in some goat cheese, uh, Emmentaler. If you wanted to give it a more sort of Swiss kind of vibe, Emmentaler or Greer would work really, really nicely. Or just straight Parmesan if you wanted to keep it sort of strictly Italian. So either way, whatever kind of cheese you put into this that melts, Will really bring a new a new vibe to them. It's going to need a little bit more salt. How are we doing, folks? Is our cheese sauce looking good? Okay, so I'm going to just have a quick squeeze of my chicken. So we don't want to overcook the chicken because we're still going to finish it off with the actual cheese sauce so i'm just gonna have a quick squeeze of that i think it might be time to take it out of the oh so that is looking quite yummy oh cheese is starting to ooze and what you can see around the sides here where the cheese has started to ooze it started to caramelize and get a little crunchy and the vegetables are nice and soft underneath cooking in the olive oil and in the juices from the olive oil and from the ch from the chicken as well. So all of that, all that chicken stock, as it were, that, that oozes out that you find in the bottom of your pan is tasty as all hell. And now it's going to be in the vegetables. So the vegetables are soaking up that lovely chicken. It's, it's the thing I like to do as well. If you're going to roast a whole chicken, worth using the same sort of vibe maybe some red onions in this as well. You put your roast chicken on top and you roast it. And all of those lovely juices and the fat um, that's all part of the flavor of roast chicken really soaks up the, the vegetables, really soak that up and it really gives a lovely, lovely flavor. So it's certainly that's something worth doing. Well, my flame disappeared here. Let's just crank this up. So virtually my chicken is almost cooked through. I can feel it's quite firm. So when I put the cheese sauce on, I'm not going to have to cook it for too much longer. I'm just going to actually gratinate it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the oven onto grill so that it just caramelizes on top. I'm now it's been on on oven setting. I'm going to crank it up so it just sits under the grill so that it'll bubble with the mozzarella quite nicely. Okay, how are we doing, folks? I don't know about you, but if you can smell this. It's a glorious, glorious smell. That heated basil and the tomato and the olives and all this stuff, this sort of flavor is kind of wafting up. It really is going to be quite tasty, this dish. It's a lovely smell in the kitchen. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, let's get that. Let's clean this a little bit. Okay, so we're just basically waiting for our cheese sauce to thicken at the moment. I just want this, it's, it's thin, it's quite thin. I want it to reduce down a little bit more before I put the cheddar in. I, I try not to, to with, the, with the cheddar, I don't want to cook it for too long once the cheddar's in it. Um, it's, it's kind of like you want it to just melt the cheese and then, and then, and then use it. Because what I tend to find is that, that that piquancy from the cheddar is lost a little bit when you start to cook it afterwards so i like to get the sauce down to the desired consistency and then only put the cheese that the last bit of cheese in i i've just elena sorry not i uh on your instructions elena just added some gorgonzola oh that can be nice flip flip is be really nice. flip is a smuggler of of wagyu uh, burgers patties it's the most amazing okay. patties so <laughs> You know, you do that with some red Leicester cheese. You put that on the grill and then with some uh, of the gorgonzola, the blue cheese. So uh, I've just... I mean, the nice, yeah, but you're right, but I mean, the nice thing about this sauce is that you can kind of use all those little odds and ends, those little bits of cheddar, little bits of that you wrap up and put yeah. it in the fridge and you're not quite sure what to do with it. 
All of those little offcuts can be grated into this sauce to make a nice sort of mega cheesy sauce. It's a, it's a great way to use up little bits and pieces of cheese that I always, in our little cheese drawer, there's always little last slithers of, of something that, yeah. that you end up throwing away because they get dried out. But now you can keep them for this lovely cheese sauce. Great. Okay. So that's nice consistency. And now I'm just going to plonk my cheddar in. I'm going to say, we're just going to stir that in. Again, the cheese will help to thicken the sauce. And don't forget, if you don't use, I'm looking now at how much cheese sauce I'm actually going to put on my chicken. It's probably more cheese sauce than I need for this recipe. Um, but I figured you can always use it again tomorrow. And the thing is, is that, you know, we used a, a, a carton of 250 mil cream. If, the, the thing is, if you if you use half of it, then you're stuck with half a carton of cream. And what do you do with half a carton of cream? It's much better to have a couple of hundred, uh, you know, 150 mils of, of cheese sauce left over. You're more likely to use that. Use that for a bit of breakfast over a poached egg would be really, really nice. A little eggs mornay. Let's have a little. Oh, oh I'm going to turn that off. That is. Super, super cheesy. Now, I mean, I, I've, just tasted, I, I've just tasted the sauce, you know, and, and part of today's and, and, and yesterday's lecture of, of, of George on having fun was that you must have this one belly laugh a day yes. and, at least, and at least one orgasm if it's possible. And both if it's... Probably not at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this, this, this sauce equals an orgasm. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. Yep, it is quite stunning. Okay, I'm just going to shoot off the and get a spoon. Okay, so now we're ready for the final. And I'm just going to spoon. If you can see me, maybe that other screen. Okay, so I'm just spooning some cheese sauce over the chicken. There's no need to drown it. I don't think you should pour over as much as you would if it was a cauliflower cheese. But just to give the... The chicken a nice coating. There we go. So I've still got about mm, a third of the cheese sauce left, which is fine. And then we get our mozzarella. We just sprinkle that on. There we go. I think to this, we'll just give a final grind of pepper let's get rid of all these bowls a final grind of pepper no need for any more salt on this this is going to be salty enough there we go and i say i'm now going to pop this under the grill i'll now put the grill on and this is going to go into the grill for a couple of seconds just to the melt the cheese and give a nice bit of color There we go. That shouldn't take too long. Let's just clean up here a little bit. Okay. Get rid of these bowls and some other bits and pieces. Clean as we go. Now, I just thought an accompaniment for this is a nice little bit of green salad. Again, you know, we've got so many fabulous flavors. In our in our in our actual dish, but we, we just probably need something something more vegetable, something sharp, something light, and the nice dress a uh, bit of rocket salad, just a squeeze of lemon juice or a little bit of balsamic vinegar and some olive oil is all that you need as a kind of um, a, a nice sort of crisp sharp foil to the rich chicken dish. Oh, so look at that! Really I'm just going to clean up here. Get out a plate so that we can. Have a bit of dinner. Right. So, how are we doing, folks? Are we are we, are we in the oven yet? Let's let's quickly check check in with the uh, with the crowd. I'm just gonna remove our spotlights that we can um, have everybody on our screen. Greg, how's it going there? Is your uh, are you coping? 
Uh, Greg is too far from the unmute button, but let's say, Carol, are you coping there? Yeah, I'm all good, thanks. You're all good. Looks like Great. Still good. Great. Flip, are you, are, is your kitchen still in one piece? Uh, making progress, thank you. There, there's the there's the air fryer chicken, nice and oh, colorful. Oh. <laughs> uh, but the, the others the others are coming on. I'm busy with a tea sauce, which is uh, uh, over my pay grade, but I, I'm I'm going to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But uh, it's, it's going well. Thank you. EB's iPad, how are you doing? Who's EB? I can't see. No, you are muted. You are muted, EB, whoever EB is. Can you hear me now? Yes. Who are you? Yeah. I guess Binti. Oh, Binti. Hi, Binti. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, we have load shedding now, so I'm doing it on the stove top and oh. on the gas stove, so I want to see what the, if, if I can manage without the, the, without the oven, oven or the air fryer. Great. Okay. <laughs> Amy, we'll cut it over here. Amy. Amy. It's going well, a little bit behind, but Can I'm catching up. Yes, who are you? Yeah. Thank you, Binti. Yes, Amy, how are you? But sorry, Amy, get no, you can finish talking, sorry. But Amy is busy uh, rescuing something there. Okay. Okay. Well, look, I think the main thing is, I, I mean, obviously, we forget load shedding is a complete nothing nightmare. I think next time we'll do this, we'll do, we'll definitely do some load shedding friendly recipes so that we don't have to rely on. I mean, apart from maybe lights or a torch, we get a, everyone get our headlamps on and we'll do something on a, on a gas, on a gas top or something along those lines. Or maybe we need to bry. I think maybe we should, we should venture into a, doing a little bit of a bry next, next month. But I think the most important thing I mean, about this something there. is it, okay. this needs okay. to be fun. Well, I think the main but thing is, I mean, obviously, it's going to be a nightmare. I think next time we'll Okay, Pete, you can go. Yep. So I think I think you know the, the primary focus and the primary point of, of this cook along is is not to induce more stress, but to relax and have some fun. So I think what we'll look at is something that will be there'll be more more uh, load shedding friendly. Um, so that and also don't forget by next month it'll be light later as well. So we'll we'll also be able to not not be plunged into darkness because it is it's all about lowering those cortisol levels and that's about having time having fun sharing the food with the family and also getting everyone involved. You know, you've got to get your trusty assistant involved. Um, you know, as you can see how busy Steph has been, he's, you know, this dish never would have come together if he hadn't grabbed those sun-dried tomatoes. Carol is just asking uh, on the chat, I missed, where must the moss cheese, mozzarella cheese go in? So that goes okay, on the yeah, the mozzarella goes right on top. Once you put your cheese sauce on, mozzarella will finish that off. And um, I think mine is probably ready by now. Let's have a quick squeeze. I'm just looking for a nice bit of color. Oh, yes, there we go. We don't want to overcook anything. We don't want the chicken to dry up. So this was just about melting the, whoops. Now what I'm gonna do here is, Pete, Pete, put it on the on the on the stove so we can uh, get the the other view. Yes. Okay. Much better idea. Where's 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 the, just want to find? Let me just quickly get that view. Okay. There we go. Ooh, looks amazing. How does that how does that look? Oh, there uh, we go. See, nice little crispy bits around the outside. The veg is softened and the olives. So when you scoop this up, I'm not going to plate it now because it looks it will look a bit ugly. Um, you know, it looks sexy like this when it goes on the table, and as you can see, nice sort of caramelization going of the of the of the of the mozzarella and the veggies are starting to crisp up around the edges. This is going to be rich. It's going to be heavenly, and I feel from the chicken breast, they shouldn't be overcooked. It shouldn't be too dry. So this should be flavorful 
cheesy as all hell. And say, we'll serve this with our little green salad, green rocket salad. It doesn't have to be rocket. You can just do a normal green salad. Um, I just quite like the pepperiness of rocket. It just adds another dimension. It cuts through the richness of the cheese. So we have it, guys. Cheesy, cheesy baked chicken Mediterranean. Thank First time you. I've made this. So this is a virgin recipe that we've, I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> it looks delicious. <laughs> oh, well, that was, that was fun. And uh, all the kids, there's about three, four kids, families with kids and uh, all teenagers who are, they would like to cook with us. So, so they joining us on, 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 on YouTube and they're cooking along. So I think within the next few months, I guess we have to have a kid cook along, you know? And yes, definitely. Great idea. And then there's one other thing. I mean, Mark from the UK. I mean, somehow he's not joining us tonight. So you have to check up on him, you know? Yeah, I think he's probably working. <laughs> no, no, Tuesdays is an off evening. So I'll have to check oh, up on okay. Chef Ooh. Mark in, in the UK. You know? no, so we'll have to check a, up on him. The thing. I'm not sure what's going on. You know? Okay. <laughs> Well, maybe it's his night off and he doesn't want to be cooking on his night off. Oh, that's well explained. Yeah, Finally yeah, gets yeah. an evening off and now he has to cook again. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you'll yeah. find he's probably gone out and let someone else do the cooking for him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So thank you so much, Pete. Okay, let's guys. Just, let's just quickly let's, go to everybody and then see yeah, how... Yeah, have a look and see, see how, what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Elena, did you do something tonight? Did you do some cooking? Can we see, some, can we see something? I'm not sure. So just put it here on, not on the keyboard, but here on. <laughs> oh, that looks pretty good. Nice. It's nice, eh? Very hey? cool. It's Very lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emmy, where's yours? Carol, I want to see yours too. Okay, so how do I. We are. Oh, okay. Well, Carol, let me just put the spotlight on you. Let me just. Uh... Oh, lovely. That looks great. Ooh. Very nice. Good, 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 good. Okay. Very tasty. Great. Thanks, Carol. Um, who else is ready for us? Let's just quickly see. Nah. Gallery. Who? Who's ready for us? Flip, are you in a... Greg, are you ready for us? Can you show us? Mine man, man is still... We're still busy with the sauce. Okay, Flip, let, let's quickly look at Flip's, at Flip's one. Flip, show us. Yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, I, I had my oven setting wrong way around, so it's, it must go to the grill now. Okay, but cool. it's good. It's good. Yeah, that, okay. that, should have, that should have looked like a diabetic okay. recipe of just cooking things up, you know. Yeah, no, it, it needs it needs right heat. Up. It needs heat, serious heat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but the grill, the grill is not essential. The grill is just more for aesthetics than anything else. You can just bake it in the oven without using the grill. It's just you get that lovely caramelized, little bubbly brown look if you put it under the grill, but it's not essential. Hmm. Great, let's let's have a look. Who else is there? Emmy, are you ready? Greg, did you show it? You, yours is Greg is still in the oven. Emmy is still running around. Greg, who can I do? Good donkey. Or some very so smart quite on vessels. Great. Oh, lovely job. Elmery, how are you doing? Up over the back. Louise? Yeah, hello. Uh, yes, uh, I just put it back in the oven now. Uh, okay. After I put the sauce on. Okay, good, 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 good. That's great. Okay, so everybody seems their stuff is still in the oven. So Pete, thank you so much. 
Well, absolute pleasure. I'm going to tuck into our dinner. So everybody have fun. Enjoy yourselves this evening. And it has been great cooking with you. Until we do this again, may the sauce be with you. Yeah, thanks. Thank thanks, you. thanks so much, Pete. That was good. Enjoy. Cheers. <laughs>